If you want to start taking incredible photos of the night sky, I highly recommend you invest in a small star tracker. You can use your existing camera and lens and attach it to a star tracker to start taking amazing deep space photos. The key to this device is its precise tracking. It matches the apparent rotation of the night sky and freezes deep space objects in place. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a star tracker and show you the exact techniques I use to take pictures like this. For this project, I drove about an hour away from home to a dark sky location. Dark skies are always important for astrophotography, but they really come in handy when you're shooting wider shots through a camera lens. If you're doing this in your backyard and there's some light pollution, it can still work, but finding and framing up your targets will be a little bit trickier just because there are less stars in the sky. The great thing about a star tracker setup like this is that everything is battery powered and it's very portable. It provides a lot of freedom when choosing a spot to set up. This one uses AA batteries and will last the entire night. I've mounted it to a carbon fiber tripod that's lightweight, provides a lot of height, and has a hook to add a counterweight at the bottom for stability. Tonight, a half-lit moon will rise at about 3 a.m., giving me a solid window to capture some time on my dim nebula before that happens. Ideally, for deep space photography, you wanna set up on a completely moonless night for maximum contrast in your target. I also know that my target will rise just after it gets dark out, but it will be low in the southeastern sky. I use a handy astronomy app on my phone called Stellarium to give me a preview of the night sky to help me find and frame up my targets. With summer around the corner, the Milky Way core is rising earlier and earlier each night. It's a really exciting time for astrophotography. When you've chose the perfect spot to set up with a clear view of the direction your target is in, you can start preparing your camera and lens for action. By far, the most important part of the process is your polar alignment. A star tracker is a paperweight if this isn't done properly. Thankfully, it's super easy to do and there are plenty of free apps that show you exactly how you need to adjust the mount. You'll use the North Star Polaris as a point of reference and carefully adjust these little screws to adjust the positioning of the mount so that its axis is lined up with the North Celestial Pole. It's basically a circle and Polaris will spin around it throughout the night. You just look through the little eyepiece on the star tracker and match the diagram on your app. The best time to do this is at dusk when the North Star is visible, but you can still see what you're doing out here. Remember, this has nothing to do with the tripod's location or where the camera and lens are pointed. It's just the star tracker. So if you wanna move everything to a new spot, you'll have to polar align again. Once you're polar aligned, that's where you're shooting for the night. The camera I'm using is a mirrorless Canon model with an affordable prime lens attached. For deep space photography, in terms of magnification, this is on the wider end of things compared to say a telescope. This camera lens has a focal length of 135 millimeters, which can capture a huge chunk of the night sky at once. You may be surprised at how how enormous some of these deep space objects are. The one I'm shooting tonight is over a dozen times the width of a full moon. While there are plenty of smaller deep space objects that you do need a telescope for, a camera and lens is perfect for the big stuff. Just to make it clear here, this is the wedge base that is threaded to your tripod. And then the star tracker is attached to the wedge. And on there, this is the ball head mount adapter and then a photography ball head, which is you'll have to buy separately, and then the camera is attached to the ball head mount. So at this point, you have your tripod and star tracker set up and your camera attached. I'm using a ball head on this star tracker for complete pointing freedom. The ball head makes it a lot easier to get the exact framing and orientation I want on my subject. This camera and lens combo I'm using is light enough so that balance really isn't an issue. If I unlock the clutch on the tracker, you can see how it falls to the one side. Again, this isn't really an issue in terms of balance. It's a lightweight load as far as star trackers go. But for heavier lenses or telescopes, this model comes with a counterweight bar that you can use to balance everything. Balancing your rig becomes really important as you start using heavier telescopes Scopes at higher magnifications. To point my camera in the direction of the sky I want, I release the clutch using this black ring here. Then I lock it in when I have the angle I want. Don't tighten it too hard or it can get stuck, just enough where it feels secure. When it's tightened, it will track smoothly at the rate of motion the stars move at. It's so slow that you really can't even tell if it's moving at all. This one includes a dial with many different tracking rates, but I've only ever used one. 
the star icon represents sidereal rate, and that's the one you want for deep space. When this thing is tracking, don't go near it. Don't kick a tripod leg. Don't create vibrations with your heavy feet stomping around. Don't even breathe near it. This precious, magical device is tracking your deep space object. Let it do its thing in peace. In terms of camera settings, I'll use some straightforward, low-light photography settings that lend themselves well to astrophotography. For starters, I'll set the aperture of the lens to a speedy f3.2. This lens goes down to f2, but generally you'll capture tighter, better looking stars if you stop down. You'll have to experiment with your lens to see which f-stop is the sweet spot, but in general, the faster you have that lens set, the more light you can let in in a single shot. If you're just getting into deep space astrophotography, I highly recommend this Rokinon 135 mm f2 lens. The focal length, 135 millimeters, is just deep enough to start revealing some of the largest deep space objects in the night sky. Most galaxies are too small in this lens, but the bigger ones like Andromeda and the Triangulum look amazing. Take all of your images using raw image format. This will contain the most information and detail in your photo and provide the most options later for processing it. You'll want to set your camera mode to manual, which will force you to choose every camera setting from ISO to shutter speed. With this camera, I find ISO 1600 to work out great for my deep space photos. While the individual pictures may look a little noisy, we can reduce this by a large degree by stacking several images together. One setting people like to really focus on and debate is the perfect exposure length. While it depends on the project, I generally use an exposure of 90 seconds for my deep space projects. This is long enough to collect a serious amount of light, especially at f3.2, but manageable for a star tracker. You can always confirm that you're on the right track by looking at the histogram of your images after they come through. If the data is running into the left, the shadows, or into the right, the highlights, you'll need to make an adjustment. To take the actual pictures, I use this cheap remote shutter release cable I bought on Amazon to automate a series of pictures to fire off. It plugs into the side of the DSLR camera and then I just control the settings on this simple LCD screen. When using this cable, the camera needs to be set to bulb mode to allow for longer exposure settings past 30 seconds. A lot of people early on seem to get hung up on finding targets and I get it. If you're new to astronomy and you haven't learned the night sky yet, it's all a mystery. However, there are so many handy planetarium apps for your smartphone out these days that you can really get a feel for the brightest stars and constellations. I like to use the AR feature on Stellarium to orient myself and find my target. For tonight's project, I can see the brightest star in the area, Antares, and use that as a point of reference for the nebula nearby. There isn't always a bright star in the frame with your deep space object, but when there is, it's super handy. You can use that same star to focus your lens and know that your deep space object is sharp. For dimmer targets with no bright stars nearby, expect to have to take a number of test exposures to see what's in there. The live view mode on your camera will show the brightest stars in the field of view, but to see nebulosity, take a 15 or 20 second exposure to reveal it. So get as close as you can, take a test shot, adjust, test shot, adjust, and you'll eventually get it. For this tracker, you need to take the ball head mount off to see through the polar axis. So keep that in mind. Now take the cover off the back and I can see through it to align Polaris. I don't want to set that in the grass, it'll be soaked. So it's dusk now and I'm roughly pointed north and I have my latitude pretty close. I'm at 43 degrees north here. And then I've pulled up my Polar Finder app on my phone to give me a reference point of where to put Polaris in that circle, in the North Celestial circle there. And it's between one and two o'clock. So if I look through it right now, I'm gonna use the Altaz bolts here on the mount itself, not moving the tripod, just these bolts left and right until I see that star in the position I need to match. I'll also use the latitude adjustment here to make some slight tweaks, the up and down. I'm polar aligned now, but I'm not pointed at my target because it's still just below the horizon. Probably another 20 minutes or so until I can get framed up on my subject. Because this object is starting really low on the horizon, my pictures will get clearer and clearer as it gets higher up with better transparency and less atmospheric disturbance. I expect the temperature to drop throughout the night 
and I'll have to adjust my focus. If everything goes well tonight, I'll have captured a few hours worth of exposure time on my subject and have enough data to process an incredible image. So wish me luck. <laughs>